Hello again, Year 8. Welcome back after half term. We've got our third week of learning on about chemistry on Earth here. We've got two parts to this learning. One is a comprehension to build up our scientific vocabulary and the other one is a bit more practice on balancing chemical equations because I know quite a few of you have been in touch to say you're finding it a bit tricky. So first thing on this slide though is always our do now. As you know, it's a true or false. You know that if you think it's false, you have to write the real answer in your books or in your class network book on Teams now. So please do pause the video while you do that. And here are your answers. Quite straightforward. Anything you're not sure about, check it out. Um, either online, in your no own science notes, or via me. Here come our objectives for this week. You've got two objectives, so it's not too overwhelming. The first one is to collect, check and collect your scientific vocabulary. This is useful both for discussing your science and when you come to write answers. And secondly, we are going to consolidate, which means make sure that we are really confident with Balancing chemical equations. I know they're tricky, but we don't just give up. We keep on going until we've got it. So first things first, here is information about your comprehension. Now your comprehension task is a separate document. It has been posted in Teams. It has been posted on Go for Schools. It looks like the part on the left hand side of this slide, although it's obviously longer. You've got a text with lots of vocabulary and the lines have been numbered. So the first line is line one, second line two, three, four, five, etc. This is important because some of the questions tell you that the answer is found in a certain place and that will help you focus your reading. Now it does say at the top here and it says in the instructions here and I'm going to say it again, all the questions have been given in sentences and all your answers need to be full sentences too. To save boring feedback, please remember a sentence starts with a capital letter and finishes with a full stop, a question mark or an exclamation mark. It is unlikely to be a question mark though as you are answering questions. Uh, this task will give us a whole class feedback so do well and you will be quoted you know how that goes you will need to pause the video to do this task right welcome back to your week's learning i'm hoping that you found the comprehension task wasn't too tricky remember any of the words that you find hard to spell or hard to remember what they mean you need to make a note of them and an effort to learn it. Now we're looking at balancing equations again, a little bit like a seesaw. And you have a pivot in the center and the seagull can go down in either direction or it can be completely even. And this is what we want for a balanced equation is to be like the seesaw in the middle of our image here. And we need equal numbers of all elements on both sides of the equation. Balanced, equal, it's fair, just like sharing sweets or pizzas or cakes or apples at home. Things you need to remember before you start. This is feedback from your previous work on chemical equations. Every element symbol starts with a capital letter. If the second letter is lowercase, it's a longer symbol for the same element because, for example, Carbon uses the letter C, so when it comes to calcium, we need to use a CA, so we know it's not carbon, we don't get confused. This is one element, this is also one element, there are different elements. Your periodic table will help you check. There is one in your planner, there is one on Teams. If you still can't find one, get in touch with me and I will help you out. If you've got a small number below the line, that's called a subscript, and that tells you that number goes to that element only. If you haven't got a small number, then that means we read it as a 1. We don't write in the 1s because most elements have a 1 and that would be boring. So H2O with water would have 2, lots of hydrogen, because this little 2 
only applies to the H that it follows. Then comes an O for oxygen. There's no number, no subscript there, so there's only one of those. If you have a large number in front, that applies to the whole element or the whole compound. So that's two here means double everything. So there's two lots of H2. So two times two is four. I know we can do that. And the, you've also got two lots of one oxygen. So two times one, again, is two quite straightforward. If you are not sure about any of this, make sure that you have paused the slide to make your notes here on the part you're not sure. If you're not sure of any of it, write it all out and test yourself before you move on. Please pause now. Right, here is a checkup. How many atoms of each element? So remember, you're looking for capital letters to find the element. I have put one sneak in there where there is a lowercase letter. Don't get caught out by that if you can help it. And then how many atoms of each? You have got subscripts, little numbers going below the line that only apply to the one in front. And you've got, super, you've got big numbers at the front that apply to the whole element, a whole atom. The answers for this question do follow on. So make sure that you pause the video while you do this task. OK, here is the answer sheet. If you have got this correct, or nearly all of it correct, you are ready to move on. If you did not get it correct, go back and have a look. Find out why you got it wrong and sort it out either through a bit more practice or through finding some online, an online task or messaging me because if you can't get this bit right, you are not ready for the next bit. You've got it right, put your hand up, bend it the elbow, give yourself a pat on the back, you are ready to move on to balancing practice. So we're going to start simply. We've got Cu, that's copper. We've got O2, that's oxygen. Oh, that was our starter supply, seemingly. And it makes copper oxide. The arrow goes from left to right. That's the direction of change. It is not reversible because it only goes one way. Check what we've got. We've got one atom of copper. We've got two because it's got this little subscript here, atoms of oxygen on the left-hand side. Over here, we've got one atom of copper, one atom of oxygen. This is not balanced by adding up. We've got two atoms and we've got three atoms. So this is how our reaction would look. It's heavier on the reactants than it is on the products. This does not work. How could we sort this out? If you want to have a think and a prediction, you can pause the video. Otherwise, you can move on. Now, we know that in the product, there has to be one oxygen for every copper. So that means we're going to need to double our starting copper because we've already got two lots of oxygen. So we're going to have two lots of copper. That will give us two atoms of copper. We've already got two atoms of oxygen. So then, as we've got one and one, we're going to need to put a two at the front of the compound, the copper oxide, to double the whole thing, double the molecule. Then we'd have two atoms of copper, two atoms of oxygen. Now we've got four atoms and four atoms and we are balanced. Happy days, we have done it. But you're pleased with that. Not so tricky, was it? Moving on. Next one, H2 and O2 makes H2O. Okay, H2 is hydrogen, O2 is oxygen, they're both gases, they both exist as double atoms. It makes water, and then we can't just add another O to it, otherwise instead of having water, we will have peroxide, which is poisonous, and we really don't want that. So we are going to have to balance this equation. I've done the counting up underneath again, and we can see that again, it is heavy on the reactants. How are we going to sort this out? If you want to have a go on your own before checking the answer, remember you can pause the video here. So, we know that we need two hydrogens for every oxygen because it's H2 and the O 
not having a number in the water, it means there's only one. So let's start by doubling the molecules of reactant hydrogen. So instead of having H2, we'll have two lots of H2. Two times two is four. So we've got two lots of that. We've already got two lots of oxygen. So in order to get four lots of hydrogen on the product side, we're going to have to double the molecules of water. And two times two is four, and two times so, now that balances. That's easy. We're starting to feel good about this, I'm sure, aren't we, year eight? Yep. So, another one here, the final example I'm going to give you. I've put the working out. I haven't put in the atom count. I want you to do that this time so that you can check that you're understanding. Right, if you've done that, you're ready to move on to the final slide. Two part activities on this, so make sure you pay attention carefully. The final slide, if you want a voice that isn't mine and a written example to watch, there is a YouTube link for that. You've also got some practice questions that are being put, have been put into your class notebook on Teams and on Go for Schools. Please, please, please put your work into assignments when you've done it, because that way it is really easy for me to give you feedback. So at the end of this, you will have done your comprehension. You will have practiced balancing and you'll have done the balancing questions. So you've got two pieces of work to give in to me. Any problems, message me on Teams or email me. Messaging on Teams is better because it keeps everything in one place. But if you've got a problem with that, please email me. You know where to find me. I look forward to hearing from you soon. Stay safe in the sun and stay socially distant. Thank you very much, Year 8. Take care. Bye for now.